Tonight, my very dear friend Arshia, who is an excellent cook, is going to show us how to make her delicious pork chops and give us a few tips and fundas along the way. Hello. Hi, yeah. I'm very privileged to be on your show. Yes, and you're going to be, actually, we're going to see you. I know. I know. So. I wish I'd, I would have put more makeup on. Okay, so, um, pork chops, which we've been eating together for years. But the critical thing about these pork chops is they are actually the easiest, easiest, easiest pork chops you can ever make. A lot of that depends on the pork that you buy, which you'll see in a bit le right now. Let me just show you how to make this marinade, it's a glaze, it's the cooking sauce. So basically, <clears throat> you need um, a light vinegar, so coconut vinegar is nice. Um, dark vinegars, balsamics are, are, are too spicy. Um, a sugarcane vinegar is alright, but I like this. And then um, you have Worcester sauce. The original one. The original, but you can use American Garden or whatever it's called. It doesn't matter, but you know. I would say this is something you always have to have in your kitchen. And this is expensive, but because it's expensive, it tastes very good. So you use very little, so it's worth it because it lasts longer. If you buy a cheap Worcester. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Um, Honey, we're going to use honey tonight, right. double squeezy. Um, you need something sweet in the, in the marinade or pork. You need something sweet along with the vinegar to just bring it to life. So ideally I would use like a plum jam or like a sea buckthorn. Yeah, yeah, which is just like some fancy From berry Ladakh, that you right? get in Ladakh. Yeah. Um, so they're less sweet, but in the absence of those things, in a regular kitchen, everybody's going to have honey. And if you're feeling a little more adventurous, um, marmalade, but a bitter marmalade, not a sweet one. Mm. Okay. And then, because we are deshi, always the hot sauce, uh, but you do need something hot. I prefer um, a reddish hot sauce to black pepper, because of course you know the tastes are completely different. And then we have mustard. Any old mustard will do. This is all your homemade mustard? This is not my homemade okay. mustard. Um, just any old mustard oh, will okay. do. Otherwise I would use my own. But yeah. today since it's a demonstration, which makes things um, easy for everyone. Right, so th I just thought that you can um, also use soy sauce if you like. But you have to be careful because soy is salty. Right? And with this one you can be a little bit more sure. Um, so I am making half a kilo of pork chops. They'll be a little less than half a kilo because I'm going to cut off some of the fat. So, come on. So this is um, a one quarter cup. Um, so always start small. You can always add then I get impatient, so then I do this. Um, then you put in the vinegar, whatever vinegar you're using, remember to shake the bottle. Okay, we're gonna do the same amount, right? Um, the other critical thing about this marinade, really, is that you have to keep um, tasting it because it will be to your palate um, big gob, like a tablespoon of mustard. But whatever marinade you're making for anything is not just for pork chop, it will always be to your preference. Um, I like things very mustardy, hence the big gob. The other thing, of course, when you're making something like this, is you can just it's kind of laissez-faire, you know, keep adding. Um, now that was a lot of mustard and it was a one-fourth cup of vinegar so I'm gonna be whoops quite generous with the honey mm, yeah good spank like this yes yeah, so that was about a third mm. cup 
of honey. Mm. You're allowed to pause to have a sip. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so now basically we've got everything in there except our hot sauce. I am using something called Nagin, which is from Nagaland, which you can use any, any hot sauce you like. Um, Tabasco even will do. Um, this is super hot, but I think my dinner guests for tonight like things healthy. So I'm going to put in a fair amount. Um, you can also, if you like, add like a little bit of cinnamon. If you want cinnamon powder, you can put in cinnamon powder. You can add just like a little piece of dalcini. Um, you can add a couple of clo um, cloves, lavang. Uh, yeah. It's darchini, not ah, dal. Darchini, thank you. Sorry, yes. Okay. Pedantic. Pedantic. So I'm gonna, this is how you taste. Oh, I really like this. Here's your um, sauce, marinade, glaze, whatever you want to call it. It's nicely stirred, right? Not shaken. Not shaken. <laughs> bad jokes, uh, bad jokes. Bad jokes, bad jokes. Bad jokes, bad jokes. That's it. And then you let it sit for some time? Yeah, you let it sit. I mean... <coughs> so how many drinks would you let it sit for? So this is the thing. That tonight, since um, it's really quite late, um, like if I had done this, this if I had done this step, let's say 8 o'clock, I, I would have let it sit for two drinks. But since we're doing it at well past 9, I'm going to let it sit for one drink. Right? Um... So, one drink for those of you who don't drink, if there are really people like that in the world who actually watch this channel, I would say half hour. So, one for me, right? One for you, and one for the little piggy. Okay? A piggy is just right. Yeah. So, uh, I do like to put alcohol in my glazes and marinades and all of that because it has that lovely smell you know when the when the flame is high and since this is a whiskey drinking house the alcohol that goes into the marinade is always whiskey none of this rum shit okay so we are at part two in which you have to dress differently because it's splashy very impressed very with impressed this. yeah yeah all for you for the show okay so here's the thing um you need essentially a griddle, yeah, <clears throat> it could be your um, cast iron uh, thing, it could be a dosa pan, not a dosa pan, not non-stick, it can be a tawa, a regular iron tawa, um, but I have this wonderful thing which makes me very happy. Um, so it's just heating up. The important thing to remember is now we're searing the meat or braising it. Um, we're not quite sure what it's called, but it's what you put your marinated meat on what is um, a very, very hot surface so it gets nice and sealed from the outside. That's the point. Um, and why I would suggest cast iron or a tawa or a griddle if you have one is because the heat distributes very, very evenly. Cheers. Cheers, cheers again. Cheers again. And this time there's a probability that it's going to be the cameraman rather than the cook who's drunk. Well, I don't know. Uh, okay, so um, I'm just going to turn this around so it picks up evenly, um, which is not a fault of the griddle, it's the, um, the size of my burner. Okay, now here's the important thing. Never be afraid to use your hands. Okay, can you hear that nice chum, 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 sound as it goes on? Um, I didn't put any oil because pork chops are fatty. Oh my god, it smells very good. Mm. 
Uh, I can taste the whiskey <laughs> for some reason. So here we are. Um, you can see that they're all touching the surface um, of the of the um, cooking pan, and because of the marinade, um, don't shake off all the marinade before you put it on. Right? Put it on. With some okay. So I forgot to mention that obviously this has been on. I keep all this time. Um, okay, I'm just gonna take a little bit just to get that lovely time. While all this good stuff is going on here, it's not gonna cook fully in the grill pan. So I'm going to now get heat up the cast iron. Look, um, look at how beautiful that other side is, right? Mm. And so what I'll do is... Oh man, they're looking so good. So again, I'm not putting any oil. This is already a bit heated up. Um, Really, I'm telling you, I'm just imagining my grandmom watching me drool over pork chops. Even your grandmom. Okay. Especially this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so all of the mayonnaise. How the important sound changes, thing, totally, no? Totally. Very important thing to remember, this is not on high heat. Oh, it's not. Okay, okay. This is on medium. Uh, yeah. So now lazy me, we'll just put in some room temperature water. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's the important thing, no? That when you move the pork chops from your braising or searing or whatever, it shouldn't go into a cold pan. Yeah. Because the meat will get a shock. Right? Okay. And on the it'll not be so tender. All right. Yeah. That's Even interesting. Even dead meat has feelings. Excuse me. If you have a good um, cast iron pan, which everybody should have, if they're going to take themselves seriously as cooks, um, this is a really, really heavy lid. And so effectively... Becomes um, a Dutch oven. Exactly. exactly. Or like a pressure so, cooker. This, so you see that it is completely sealed. Um, and because of the weight of the lid, it actually acts like a pressure cooker. And now, with confidence, you can put it on sim. Um, and this is definitely a two drink weight. So it's been um, many drinks, but for those of you who count your time differently, it's been about a half hour or so. Um, and so um, it's still quite liquidy, so I've turned up the heat and I've left it uncovered because I want the, uh, the liquid, the gravy, to be a little bit thicker and for the fat to render. So that's what's happening now. I think probably because the meat is so good, I think once we've actually boiled it down to the consistency that we want, we won't have to cook it any further. I have one more thing to say, very important. People might have noticed, the, the discerning viewer might have noticed that we never put any salt in anything. And that's because um, Worcester sauce is salty in and of itself, so it's probably better not to add salt and let the person who's eating decide. Perfect. Um, so that was about what, maybe five or ten five minutes? Five or minutes of that or seven minutes, sir. Of a super high boil. Look how different it is. Look, uh, see the fat is rendered. This is now the consistency of the gravy that you want. Um, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to turn it off. But leave it in this magic thing called the Dutch oven. And close it. Yeah, close it. So it will continue to cook because um, all meat must rest, as most all human beings.
who are also made of flesh. Um, there we go. So I'm just going to leave it for maybe um, 10 minutes or so. And then we'll eat it.